So just how much weekly and monthly cash flow can you generate? If you had a lump sum of investment, say 50 or $100,000 in the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ 100, spoiler alert, a whole lot of money. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the Average Joe Investor channel. We are continuing to iterate on the previous spreadsheet that we talked about where we looked at a Roth IRA tax-free strategy where we started investing up to the maximum amount allowed for the Roth IRA. And then once we reached 100 shares, we started to sell weekly covered calls at a 20 delta. And I had a lot of questions both here in the comments on YouTube as well as in the Average Joe Investor Discord channel, which is amazing. You should check that out. Link in the description below. Had some questions about, hey, what if we had a lump sum investment? What if we already had fifty, a hundred thousand dollars cash ready to invest in the S and P five hundred or the Nasdaq one hundred, and we started right out of the gate selling covered calls? What would be the results? So this updated spreadsheet is what I think would happen based on historical data. And by the way, when I say historical data, as we look at the spreadsheet, this data is historical daily price changes in both the S and P five hundred. And then over here in the NASDAQ 100, along with dividends earned, we're not going to make any contributions to the account. We're just going to start with a lump sum investment. Here's our option data right here. And what I decided to do is actually utilize a slightly less aggressive option strategy since, you know, especially with QQQ, maybe we can reduce the effect of some of those large price swings when it comes to our options and our covered calls. So I went ahead and worked with a 15 delta right around here instead of a 20 delta, which would be up here at 442 ish. What this will likely do is result in number one, less option premium for sure, but also a lesser likelihood that our option would get assigned and we would have to sell our shares. This change to a 15 delta changed our option premium factor based on historical data and our option strike price factor. As a quick reminder, we're estimating historical option premiums and historical strike prices based on today's data. So it's not perfect. It's not even a great estimation, but it gives us some data to work with, assuming that volatility is about the same now as it has been historically, which <laughs> we know that volatility shifts all the time. So here I'm going to show you just how much we would accumulate if we number one, reinvested all of our option premium along the way. And number two, what if we just collected that option premium and we didn't actually reinvest it? What would be the impact to our portfolio after 20 years, 2003 to 2023. And we're gonna go ahead and just jump right into the actual data and then we'll look at some charts. So we've got the SPY data here, S&P 500, and then the QQQ data right here. You can disregard the Roth IRA. We're not assuming or looking at taxes at this time. And the big takeaway I wanna have is, does this strategy make sense to utilize? Is it better to just hold the asset or can we utilize an option strategy with weekly or potentially monthly recurring income that's gonna result in a better outcome for us. So as you can see here, starting in October of 2003, we have the actual price of the S&P 500. And from the outset, we're able to buy over 900 shares, but not 1,000. So we can sell nine contracts. On the contrary, over here with QQQ, we're able to have 3,000 shares or 30 contracts. That's just because the QQQ is a cheaper price. And then we're starting with $100,000 here and $100,000 right here. So first thing I wanna look at here, let's fast forward 10 years. We'll go from October 2003 to October 2013. Now what I want to call your attention to as we look at the results after 10 years are, number one, we are not contributing any new money. We're starting with $100,000 and we are reinvesting our dividends and we are reinvesting our covered call option premium back into more shares of the S&P 500. So as we look here at the results after 10 years, we can see that if we had not utilized any option premium and not contributed new money, we would only have $165,000. But in actuality, we have $331,000 as a result of reinvesting all this option premium along the way. Furthermore, with QQQ, we started with $100,000. And if we had not reinvested any option income or dividends, we'd be at $240,000. But instead, we're at $612,000. $612,000 thousand dollars. And in the most recent year, we would have generated $38,000 in option premium that was reinvested back into more shares along the way in QQQ. With SPY, we saw $18,000. And this is at a 15 delta, less likelihood of getting assigned. Let's move out to 15 years. Again, if we'd started with $100,000 and just let it sit there and grow with the market, we'd have $284,000, which is great. That's a lot of money. However, we'd have over $800,000 if we'd been selling weekly covered calls along the way and reinvesting that income. And in the most recent year, 
the last fiscal year here, we'd be at $47,000 in annual option income based on what we see over here being reinvested back into SPY for more shares. With QQQ, we would have generated in the most recent year $148,000 in option income. We would have had $561,000 if we had not been selling covered calls and not reinvesting dividends versus $2.2 million if we've been reinvesting option premium along the way along with dividends. And finally, after 20 years with the S&P 500, we would have $418,000 if we had not been reinvesting or actually using covered calls at all and just holding the asset over those 20 years, $418,000. But if we've been reinvesting option premiums along the way, we would have $1.66 million. And the most recent year, would have generated $100,000 in option premium. And at any point along the way, you could have decided to yourself, hey, I'll just turn off the spigot. I will not reinvest this option income anymore. I'll just live on it. And you'll have an increasing balance over time and just living off the option income. Over here with QQQ, this is the crazy part. And we know that QQQ just took off after COVID, which is part of the reason why this happened. Assuming that the historical option volatility is correct and based on all these premiums here, which are not perfect, but you know some, the best we can work with, we would have $1,000,000 $80,000 if we just held QQQ for 20 years, starting with $100,000. But instead, wait for it, we would have $6.5 million. I'm just going to let that number sit out there for a second. $6.5 million. And in the most recent year, this is the extra crazy part, the most recent year, the amount of option income we would have generated, $434 thousand dollars. So my question to you is we look at this chart here. This shows the difference between reinvesting option premiums in our portfolio balance versus not reinvesting option income. And we see these two lighter colors here, the light green and the light red. This is QQQ with no option income reinvested, our overall portfolio balance compared to SPY. These are both, you know, just fractions of what we see with the other numbers here. Then we have the S&P 500 with reinvested option income right here compared to without it. And then with QQQ, obviously, and then the light red without it. So my question to you is, when you look at this chart here, which one makes more sense to you? This is not a trick question. It makes sense to sell covered calls. Doesn't mean you have to be super aggressive. You can write far out of the money and just reinvest all that option premium because it makes sense to do so. To add a little bit more context here, look at the annual option income breakdown for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 SPY versus QQQ year over year from 2003 to 2023. Obviously in hindsight, QQQ looks like the better option primarily because, you know, we had that historic price growth, you know, after 2009, but also after COVID, which makes a big difference. But ultimately, when you look at both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 and what we see or, or potentially could happen in the future, which we don't know, I mean, both of these are a much better option than just holding the asset because you can live on this option income and not touch your principal. Most people out there, especially the average Joe investor, can live off of 70, 80, $90,000 just fine. And even if you wanted to, and of course you could tap into additional principal if you needed it at any time. Big takeaway here, guys. Whether it's the NASDAQ 100 or the S&P 500, it would behoove you, that's right, it would behoove you to actually sell covered calls in your portfolio, even if you're doing it conservatively because all of that extra option income is gravy when it comes to reinvesting for more shares into the underlying asset. Hopefully you found some value in this video, guys. Make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below. It's my goal to respond to all comments left on the day I post a new video. That's all I got for you guys here. Have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching.